What's up guys? He King here bringing you a double review on the latest Black Clover chapters of chapter 330 and 331. Wow. Wow. I've already done the previous video that you've all seen where, you know, the big uh, reveal was revealed. Uh, props, man. Props. What a way to end the Spade Kingdom arc with that reveal. And it's a reveal that's been there, hidden in plain sight since the very beginning of this series. Maybe the very beginning of the anime, actually, because I think the anime did a much more obvious foreshadowing, especially if you were watching, a, or I think it was Openings 2 or 3, where it highlighted several characters, and all the good characters, you know, were, had a white background, and then there was three characters that had a dark background, and, you know, two of those characters we knew were bad or traitors, and then the other one was a bit more confusing, because it was like, well, hold on a second, why does he have a, a, a dark background? And it was Julius, and it was like, ah, you're doing something there, well, what's going on? But, uh, you know, the way the story went, you didn't assume that he was a bad guy, do you know what I mean? And um, this chapter does rectify and confirm a few things, a lot of things, in fact, that when you sit down and really think about it, it puts a lot of things into perspective. But I can say this, Julius is not technically the bad guy. He is, and he isn't. And uh, again, it's something that's been foreshadowed, and we didn't even realise it. Again, right in front of our faces, and we never even thought about it. But before I get into that, remember to like and subscribe, guys. Please do, it helps. And let's just get into this, uh, into these last two chapters, because I didn't do last week's. And I am tired and exhausted and waiting for food to come. I just got back from the hospital, so yeah, just had a procedure done. I'm actually in a lot of pain right now, but um, yeah, uh, a good day's rest and tomorrow, and uh, yeah, I'll be fine. But right now, this is giving me a bit of a happiness, if that makes sense. So I want to get through this very quickly. So chapter 330, Declaration, uh, De Declaration to Darkness, started with Lucifer pretty much getting defeated. However, we didn't see them cut his heart, though, because it isn't usually the case that if you cut the devil's heart, they die, right? Well, Asta and Yuno didn't do this, so Asta and Leap technically didn't do this, but both of them are now collapsed. And then you've got uh, Adromatic, or Adrom, Adrom, whatever his name is, swooping down. And he has the chance to kill Asta right there. I mean, he's looking at him, he's got the chance to finish him off. And instead, he does the weirdest thing ever, which is basically crutch next to Lucifero's corpse and rip out his heart. So, Adroman has possession of Lucifero's heart, and he's basically like, now this is what I wanted. Yikes. So this dude... This dude takes Lucifero's heart and it flies off and, and, and says, well then, see ya. And he doesn't kill, he doesn't kill Asta or you know or whatever, like, or, or, or Nut or Yami who are pretty much there. Like, no, this dude has the chance to kill these guys and he leaves them and he flies off. Clearly he has a different agenda. We've all been speculating this dude has a different agenda. We thought he was going to come down and maybe start kicking ass. That didn't happen. Okay, fair enough. But what is his agenda? And it, it's a bit worrying, right? This dude didn't come in and help Lucifero when he was asking for it. Like, he clearly didn't uh, like Lucifero. Like, he, he was clearly against him, but he wasn't get meddling with what Asta and the others were doing. So this dude had a different agenda. He's got, and now he's got the, you know, he's got, he's got the objective he wanted, which was Lucifero's heart. Which brings up another interesting question. Has he been collecting the hearts of other demons or devils that have been defeated so far as well? Or is it just specifically Lucifero's heart that he needed? Well, he goes off going to wherever he's going. We all know where he's going. If you read the ne next chapter, we know where he's going, which is a bit like, oh my god, this is all connected, and rightfully so. So we, we then cut back to all the different characters who are hurt. We've got Asta, we got uh, Silva, we got M Meryl. Good god, someone save her, please. we got the various captains there, man. William and the army and Ven Vengeance. It's just like, yeah... It's not looking good, and it's not looking good specifically for Yami and Nux because they got freaking holes in their chests, and they're pretty much going to die. And uh, you know, I think I think it's a Yuno who summons a Mimosa to him. He summons Mimosa and tells her to get to work, but she says she doesn't have enough magic. She doesn't have enough power to heal them. So it looks like Yami and Nux are actually going to die. You've got Gray there. Arriving, with, I think that I think that's Vanessa as well. Maybe Patrick's next. Yeah, Patrick and William are next to them. 
and Grey's just like, you know, no, this can't be, she doesn't have any magic left either. And, and Patry's like, even if I had my Grim, Grim more, these wounds are like, yeah, they're, they're terrible. And then you got Charlotte there, and she breaks down and and pretty much says, you know, I came all this way to save you. What's the matter with you? Get up. Where did your ins unusual insolence go? Don't die, you idiot. I love you. She says this. She says she loves him. And uh, I think, and, and she says this next to, um, is that is that Mimosa? Is that Noel? I'm not too sure. I think it's Noel, maybe. And she says that, I love you, Yami. So please don't die. So wow. Um, this chapter is, is, pretty, is pretty important because... Uh, it sets up a lot of future things going forward, okay? Ardramel has Lucifer's heart. He didn't get involved in the fight, he's taken it, so obviously he's got a hidden agenda. And then you've got Charlotte confessing her love to Yami, who's dying alongside Noct. So these guys are about to die. And Rogue, something happens where, I don't know, I think it's Rogue, Rogue you know, Vanessa's little cat. The Rogue does something, he does meow, and boom! A, a teleport or something opens up, and all the black bulls basically arrive. You've got Gordon there. You've got, uh, yeah, Noel there. So, yeah, wait, that was Noel in there, I think. So, I don't know who that, that was. That must have been Mimosa. She looks very different in that panel next to Charlotte. Uh, we've got freaking, uh, Gushu there, is it? Is it Gushu? Um, Fer Fergen, Fergen, whatever his name is. Uh, is, is, is Light, no, that's not Light. What's the... I don't remember these characters' names, man. Okay, I, if I watch anime, it helps to remember these guys' names a lot more, but, um, because it's been a while since i watched the anime, and I've only sort of binged, like, rushed through reading the manga to catch up, uh, I'm, I'm lost on a lot of the characters' names, really, but we, we do have Charmy there, and she brings a whole ball of food and basically straight up tells Mimosa to eat up. And she's like, you know, she can't eat all of this, but like, you know, uh, you know, where's the knife and fork? It's like, screw it, shove it in your mouth, shove it all in there, eat it, eat it, eat it right now. And she's eating it, and her magic gets replenished. So, and yeah, as you guessed it, she uses her magic, flower, you know, ultimate plant magic, flower princess utopia to save Noct and Yami. And Noct and Yami are safe. Boom, done, they're right. Captain, seriously, how many times have you almost died? And he's like, don't know, but I really thought I was dead this time. And Nox, like, I just barely avoided going to the afterlife of this idiot. It's like, yeah, nah, you were definitely, definitely going to kick the bucket before me. <laughs> no, you were. No, you were. So, yeah, again, shows the camaraderie between Nox and Yami. Like, the fact that they're joking about now. So, yeah, definitely good friends. And then, of course, Yami turning to Charlotte is like, oh, Charlotte, I'm still alive thanks to you. Haha. <laughs> Uh, by the way, what were you saying earlier? And Charlotte's face just turning red and just putting her head down, basically. And everyone just, like, taking the crap out of her. And then uh, Asta being like, Captain, uh, you know, Captain Yami, Vice Captain Nog, I'm so glad you're both alive. The feeling's mutual. And Yami grabbing Asta's head and he's like, yo, you trashed my katana. Uh, what are you going to do about it? And he's like, well, well, uh, I guess... And he's just like, screw it. I guess I'll just get a new one. And he gives him... The katana, he leaves it to him. So now, now, you know, Asta's got a freaking katana he can use in fights, which is great. And all the Black Bulls turn towards Nacht and they're like, Vice Captain Nacht, thank you so much and welcome back. All of the members, welcome him back. And Nacht's just like, I hate people like you who don't do things the right way, but I'm the same as you. I will live on with you all so we can do things the right way together. And the chapter ends with the words, a fearsome battle and a reunion. What's next? So, first of all, the, these last few weeks, a lot of people have been crapping on Tabata. They've been crapping on the recent chapters. They've been crapping on the, on the way that Lucifer was taken down. But, I did say to have faith. I did say to have faith and, you know, to keep your expectations low when it comes to certain things. And that Tabata would surprise us. Okay, I was I was sure something would happen by the end of this arc, something major, something big. I didn't know what. I didn't know what it was. I kept thinking that Lucifer was either going to get hurt enough that he flies off somewhere else, or he does get defeated and maybe he gets sent back to the underworld and then Ultraman does something. I don't know. I something would happen, something big, something we weren't really thinking about clearly. And it happened. It happened literally in the next chapter right after this. Right after this chapter where everyone was pretty much angry that Mimosa and Charmy were there to basically save Yami and Nacht. And I get it. You know, you have characters like that who the specific abilities are to heal other characters. And when you have those kind of characters, it sort of ruins 
the, the sore flow and the power structure of the story because at any point in time these characters can just boom heal you and then it's done you know all the all, all that so-called death whatever goes out the window and fair enough but in my honest opinion, you can't you can't kill off Yami because like we, we we still need him. We still need him to his connection to the Rising Sun country, which I'm hoping is still gonna happen. I'm hoping we get an arc on that, at least one arc where we just go to his country and see what it's like. Because uh, surprise, surprise, guys! If you didn't know, we are we are entering the final act of the story. We're going into the final arc, like which is which is not. Um, I mean, who who saw that coming, right? Uh, <laughs> And it needs to happen. I feel like it needs to happen. Otherwise, maybe Yami should have stayed dead. Actually, like if we don't get right, you know, the, an arc set in the rise in the country of the Rising Sun, Yami should have stayed dead, hundred percent. Not obviously. He was just introduced. We just got his backstory, and for for them to kill him off would be kind of sad. When now he's like, you know, he, they're the Black Bulls. Now he can actually get to know them and become one with them, as he says here. Personally, I would have preferred if. If, you know, if I had to choose, and I'm not angry about this, let me make this very clear, a lot of people are angry, I'm not angry about this, I'm rolling with the story and I'm enjoying what the story is telling me and where the characters are going, but yeah, I probably would have liked maybe Yami to die, and for not to basically promote himself to becoming the new captain of the Black Bulls, and maybe Asta becoming the vice captain, and that way you got sort of like the legacy continuing on, if that makes sense. You know, the friend of Yami's, his best friend, ends up carrying the torch. And I feel like that would have been a nice thing to do. But alas, this is the this is the story we're going with. And that's fine, because I'm curious to see where it goes next now. Um, still hoping we get that Rising of the Country Sun arc. You know, that's my, that's my only expectation with Yami being alive, basically. But yeah, this chapter's over, and we go to the next chapter, which is hands down one of the best chapters I have read in Black Clover and contains some of the best twists ever in this series so yeah let's get right down to it guys sup guys so yeah let us continue from where we left off uh, now on to chapter 331 of Black Clover yeah I just had uh, what do you call it I just had lunch late lunch <laughs> I'm full I'm starving well, I'm not starving anymore, I'm full. I'm in pain. That's why I'm drinking this. To numb the pain. And it's going to numb the pain of reading this chapter because of how good it is. So yeah, this this chapter, man, it's, ba it's basically, you can consider this basically the final chapter of this arc. And essentially the prologue chapter to the next arc, which is insane. Like, like, like I said... This is, we're going into the final arc now, guys. Now, does that mean final arc arc, or does it mean final saga? In which case, obviously, just like all the other sagas that we've had, like the Elf Saga and the Devil Saga, or in this case, I guess the Spade Kingdom Saga, really. What's the next one going to be? Like, uh, how spaced out is that going to be? It's very interesting because chapters 1 to basically 220-ish something uh, was uh, was was the elf was the elf arc basically you know uh, 200 yeah 220 of something and then uh f the 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 uh spade kingdom arc was basically like up uh, just about a hundred chapters i think so it's very weird that the second saga was was so short compared to the first saga because like that brings up a very interesting question how how long is the next saga going to be like how much life is there left in this in the series and my, my honestly my predictions are that we've got at least at least minimum to, to 250 to 200 chapters left I think so just about as long as the first saga I think because there's a lot there's a lot they need to get through there's a lot they need to get through but uh, yeah this chapter man so we started off with you know meeting his mom yeah his mom the current queen or concert of the spade kingdom uh, Celia Green Burial your mother so that's unexpected. Oh, and this chapter is called And the Time Starts to Move. So yeah, uh, Mutino's mom's alive. Like, what? That's insane. Uh, I, I don't remember if it was confirmed anywhere that his mother had actually died or lived or not. But um, no, this is great. It's great uh, that, you know, he's, he's got a relative. He's got a parent that's there with him. And you've got his advisors. You've got the, the people that got him out. And the, the advisors pretty much going, you know, the Spade Kingdom will need your strength going forward. Are you going to return to the Spade Kingdom? And, you know, you know, he's thinking it over and his mom's talking, you know, there's a lot of things we need to talk about. I know this must be so sudden and hard to accept. 
And you know's like, the future is still uncertain. How will first I have made vows that I must keep to my Clover Kingdom family, to my dearest friends, and to my rival, the man with who I made a vow. Um, which is interesting. It's interesting because, uh, yeah, for, for all of you thinking, oh, you know's going to go to the Spade Kingdom and become the king now, whatever. Nope, nope. He's made his vows, he's made promises, and he intends to keep those first before I guess he moves on to whatever he has to do with the Spade Kingdom in the future. So that's nice. It's going to be curious though, who's going to become the ruler there? I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be it's going to be his mom. His mom's going to take over as queen until you know is fit and has fulfilled his promises and vows to come back. I do see this basically. I think I think it's pretty obvious at this point that uh, the story will likely end with Asta becoming the Wizard King. And you know, becoming the king of the Spade Kingdom, it just it just makes sense. He can't you you can't have him. It would be a big twist actually if you know does become the Wizard King, and then becomes you know the king of the Spade Kingdom as well. Like or maybe there'll be a twist, maybe the reversal. Like you know, we'll go to us to go and hey, I'm gonna be the Wizard King of the Clover Kingdom, but I want you to be the Wizard King of the Spade Kingdom, or you know, take over. Like like he, he passes on his uh, royal duties to Asta instead. Like he sees him as his equal, etc., etc. Maybe, maybe not, but I think I think it's more obvious that Asta will become the Wizard King, and you know will become the King of the Spade Kingdom. Maybe there'll there'll be a law, they'll do a law or something where there can be two Wizard Kings. Maybe I don't know, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. But we move on from you know to Asta, and we get the uh, clock. There's a clock tower there, and there's there's a lot of uh, imagery in here with clocks relating to time, which fits this chapter very bloody well in terms of what's about to happen. And we get Asta talking with Leap, and we get that confirmation. Thanks to you, I was able to see my mum inside your memories. It's not like I held a grudge over being abandoned, but knowing that she did love me, that makes me really happy. And uh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Because I kept wondering whether Asta was seeing these memories, and he was, he was seeing these memories. He was realising and understanding that Leap is in fact his like, stepbrother. You know, he he was raised by his mom. He grew up with her, so he knows all these things. And therefore, you know, they're tight now. They're very tight. And that's great. That's beautiful to see. And then you've got little mini Leap saying, You idiot, that's my line. It's thanks to you that I was able to avenge Letitia's death. Thank you, Asta. This time, it's my turn to make your dream come true. Gah, gah, gah. And he's like, that's right. So, like, Leib's gonna help. He's, uh, young, like, I'm assuming... Um, Asta would be his older brother, right? Um, I mean, are they the same age? Are they not the same age? I'm a bit confused on that one. Uh, I'm assuming Leib must be older, right? So, uh... I'm gonna say Leib's gonna be helping. It's funny because uh, Leib's tiny, but I, I imagine he's older than Asta, right? Oh, if they are the same age, then... Fair enough. But, uh, I'm just curious who the older one would be. But, uh... Never, nevertheless, it, it's it's a little it's a little tiny image of devil brother helping his human brother to become the wizard king, and then we move to you know we get this moment with you know and he's got his little fairy with him and then we got Asta in a panel with Leap, and yeah both of them saying I'm gonna become the wizard king so yeah, then we move over to the uh, Clover Kingdom where we get the title Black Clover in the middle like. And then again, again with the uh, with the emphasis on time, a yeah, big emphasis on time. Like this, this chapter is literally giving us the foreshadowing and the and the hints of what's to come. Um. Oh, this is an interesting thing that Asta says. But first, we've got to get the people of our country to admit that you're a good person, especially that guy from the Magic Con Council with the scales. And it leaves like I hate that dude. And yeah, I hate that dude as well. Like before this chapter came out. I honestly thought that uh, Damito or uh, Domito, or he, I always say his name, was going to be revealed as like uh, the big bad. I honestly thought that. I mean, the guy was just like being a total douche for no reason. Like, he kept coming up with these bloody ridiculous accusations and it just made no sense. Like, it, it only makes sense if, if he really is an arsehole or if he's the bad guy. But uh, yeah, we get this moment with him. We actually get this moment. We cut to him. We cut to Dominito, and you, again, you can see like the way the colouring, the way the shading is done. It's like it's like Tabata is trying to say he's trying to, uh, what's the word? Trick us here, like like he's trying to make us think, oh yeah, this guy, this guy is shady as hell. And we cut to Ju Ju you know Julius in his office. He's talking to Marx. Uh, the conversation ends, and Julius like, I'm thankful that the battle in the Spade Kingdom has ended safely, but something just isn't adding up. That in inexplicable uh, feeling of uneasiness. What was that? Ever since then, no, I felt it even before then. So yeah, Julius has been feeling something, something weird. 
And then uh, uh, da, dam, damnato, dam, damnatio, damato, damito, or how do you even say this dude's name? He, he's knocking on the door and he tells him to come in. And he sits down and he says he has something to talk with him about. And he shows him uh, these uh, papers, uh, uh, research on the uh, tr on the uh, devil tree, etc, etc. And he's like, ever since the court trial, I've been researching the existence of devils. I've been looking into the failures or families of devil hosts within our country. And this is what I've learned. These are documents from more than 20 years ago. And yet, and we get a panel of Megacula within the uh, qual the qual the qual the qual the the qu the qu the clip the lip quilp the quilp off. Consistently, there's no mention of the supreme devil Megacula. The underworld is said to have three rulers. Luciferal of gravity magic, also known as Satan. So we get the big confirmation here that yes, Luciferal, aka Lu Lucifer, aka Satan. Yeah, that was him, and he had gravity magic. So that's interesting to know that these three main rulers of the underworld had specific type of magic. So Luciferal was gravity. And then uh, be be Belizo Bob of spatial magic, and I think that that's the one that uh, Zen and Zeno was the uh, devil host for, and that the uh, you know defeated uh, Belizo Bob of spatial magic, and finally Astaroth of time magic. So Astaroth of time magic. Now ignore ignore the time magic thing for a second because it is pretty obvious when, when when he says this it's pretty bloody obvious where he's going with this where the hint is going with this but this devil's name is called Astaroth Asta Astaroth like come on come on who 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 even who even uh, Letitia when she had a child did she name him Asta because if she did if if Asta was was the name that his mother gave him then surely that means she named him after his dad, right? Like, because who, who is Asta's dad? That, that has to be important, right? And now we get the big revelation that there's a devil called Astaroth. Right? Like, put two and two together, it makes sense that, yeah, the, 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 this, this time devil is most likely Asta's dad. I mean, Astaroth, Asta, like, it, it's, too in, it's too in your face if that makes sense, do you know what I mean? But why? If this devil is Asta's dad, how did he, you know, get with uh, Letitia? But then, that is a very interesting thing, though, because if, you, if you're if you a devil who can control time, then essentially you could, you know, theoretically rewind time so you never run out of life force. So then you could technically be able to, you know, consummate with this human being that you meet who's got this power to drain all your life force, or maybe the, maybe it was a curse that he put on her, perhaps, or someone else did. Maybe this is how Asta survived in the womb. You know, while it was uh, draining all his magic, it's because he was a half-devil that it took a longer time to perhaps kill him, and that's why he was able to be, you know, born, to be grown up in the womb and born, and etc., etc., and not die. Like, because how did he... How did he survive Letitia for all those years before she finally, you know, as he was be as he was growing inside a womb before she gave him to the, uh, you know, after she birthed him, gave him to the orphanage? It's a bit weird, isn't it? The the theory is that she sucked out all his magic, but what if there was more to it than that? So, and she sucked out all the remnants of what he had as a devil, perhaps. And maybe this is why she was so cool with Lieb because she, it reminded her of Asta, perhaps, like, and because she's met a devil before, so it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I've. I've had experience with devils, you look like, you know, you're cool, I'm cool, I'm not scared of you, you know, be my kid, etc, etc. Maybe that's the thing, maybe that's the case, I don't know, but it will be interesting to see. So then, yeah, uh, Damitino continues his conversation, uh, perhaps Megacula took Astaroth's place because for some reason it appears that Astaroth vanished from the underworld. So this dude literally vanished 20 years ago, which would be enough time to, uh, you know, meet someone and uh, give her a kid, right? And then go and do whatever it is you do and take over a kingdom secretly. So, yeah. So, yeah, continuing this chapter, we get our Julius's thoughts. I'm still unsure, so please tell me I'm wrong. I don't know if this is a Domatino maybe saying this. It might be Domatino saying this. I'm still unsure, so please tell me I'm wrong. Moreover, perhaps by coincidence, according to my research to date, there has only been one person whose magic bears the, you know, the name of time in the whole world. The existence of the devil that's been nesting within our country. It's building up, it's building up, and we get all these flashes to Julius, to meet in uh, Yami, to meet in, uh, you know, seeing Nart, to, to, I think, Asta Dog, like, like, 
uh, and Vengeance, basically, like, it's starting to fit, it's starting to come together, you know, Dark Magic, that's amazing, I've never even seen it before, hey kid, uh, kid, let me, uh, uh, let me get a better look at you, uh, and we get this panel of uh, you know Yami and William Vengeance in, in the in the pool thing basically in the uh, in the tree thing, and uh, let me see if I can enlarge this because uh, I can't read these quotes, uh, I can't read these unfortunately. Uh, this is an interesting one because at the bottom of the panel he remembers uh, William and uh, pa Patry. Who would have thought he had two souls in one body? See, that's a big foreshadowing there. Now you're starting to realize how this is starting to connect to the first major arc. Because, uh, you know, you thought that was a twist and that's all it was. Like, oh right, William was actually Patry or Lish the whole time. You know, he was the leader of that. No, it's two souls in one body. When in reality, it was a setup. It was a setup to this very moment that we're getting. In that the big revelation is, is that during that fight with uh, Patry and uh, Julius... It was literally two people, two very powerful people who have two souls in one body fighting each other, except one of them didn't realize this. And it looks like at this very moment, Julius is starting to realize, hold on a second, if, if, the, same, if the same is true for, for, for William, what if that means then, and, and he realizes, he's like, you're right, it really is. And we get this look on Julius where he's utterly horrified. Me. This isn't a look of someone going, oh, you found me out, cool, dead. This is a look of someone realizing, oh my god, oh my god, it's me, it's me, it's me. It's, it's, it's sort of like a realizing, you. yeah, it's literally realizing you've got a demon inside you. You've got a different person that you didn't realize you had before. And then, uh, tell me, you have nothing to do with it. And... And Del Martino, you know, he, he gets that shock as well, like, when he comes to that realisation. And then Julius is like, Del Martino con, quickly, I... And before he can tell him what to do, his whole demeanour, whatever happens, changes in Julius. Like, it, it seems he's transforming, we get his Clover book, his Grim... Sorry, his Grimoire book, and it's, it's paging, turning. And Julius has transformed into some other dude, the magic is still on, and he's pointing his finger at uh, Del Martino, pause... He's paused him basically and he's like, is that not how you wished things were? And then we get the big title card on the side of this page on the panel, the final act. So yeah, like, Tabata going all out with this big reveal now. And you've got uh, Damatino with his scales out. He was about to try and uh, do something, but too late unfortunately. It was too slow. And of course, Julius says uh, Grimoire, you know, I think it had multiple pages. It didn't have a cover, really. It's just turning, it's just turning. But then suddenly, nope, there's a cover. There's a, there's a cover to this book. It appears, it closes, and we see the symbol of it. And it's the symbol of the freaking Spade Kingdom. It's the symbol of a, it's a double spade, by the way. Like, going, like, one down, one here. Very circular, very, very cool, cool looking, actually, in fact. And it closes, and then... Straight away, we see Damati, you know, Damati or falling to the ground. We don't know if he's dead. Or all we get is pause. So maybe he's stopped him and he's frozen him. He's paralyzed him. We don't know. But he falls to the ground. Skills fall to the ground. This dude, whoever he is, who's, who's ever taken over Julius's body, he's got his grimoire in his hand. And in the window, we've got Adram, Adramalek, Adramat, whatever his name is. He flies in with Lucifero's heart and is like, yo, everything happened pretty much like you said it would. Lucius... Zolgratis, Zolgratis, so holy crap, the fourth sibling revealed, it's Julius, except it's not Julius, because it's whoever this dude is, he's inside Julius's body controlling him, and we get the look, we get this dude's face, he looks like an older Julius, in fact, it looks like it is Julius, what is going on, I don't know, and he's like, ah, time's up, and then we get the, the one who will reach the strongest Wizard King. What does that mean? I don't know if that's a mistranslation or not, but what path will they walk after this? And then we get the confirmation that Black Clover will be on Hytaeus because for three months because uh, Tabata is taking a break uh, and he's going to be working on the manuscript, manuscript for the final act. So, yes, what a great freaking bloody chapter. You know, people were arguing, crying, angry at the Spade Kingdom arc and all I'm sitting there thinking is, this arc is not over yet, okay? There's, there's obviously going to be some sort of twist. You need to chill and relax. And we get this reveal. We get this final chapter that closes off 
this arc basically and is setting up the next one and it's done in the most profound most unexpected way and people had their theories they were they were sure I mean there were several newsers online who were like they were coming up these theories and you know what those theories were amazing they were great they made a lot of sense but at the same time it was like does it though will this happen don't know but all right back again oh god that was painful don't want to go in there <laughs> But, okay, so where did we leave off then? Yeah, I just finished reading the chapter. I was explaining about the whole having faith, guys. Having faith. I mean, people were hating on this arc so much. And then it ended with one of the best Revelations twists in, in this series so far. And it's like, wow, that was worth it. That chapter alone was worth everything that happened. It just gives context to everything that's occurred so far. And it's making me curious what the future of the series is going to be now. Like, what's going to happen? Like, imagine the reactions. Like, now you now you understand why characters like Yami, for example, were left alive. Because when they when they see the truth of who Ju Julius really is, that's going to blow their freaking minds. And we also will probably have a good idea about the, what the ability of uh, Lucius uh, Zol Gratis is, uh, which is probably soul magic, really, if you think about it. Like. You know, separate because we got we got the time devil and then we got the soul magic wizard. So it makes sense, wouldn't it? Because uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Dante was muscle, Vanica was blood, and Zenon was was bones. So what's what's next in a human body? I guess it would be soul, then, wouldn't it? Unless it's like blood vessels or something. No, see, that that wouldn't make sense. Skin, perhaps? He's he's skin, skin ripping that. And it doesn't make sense. It, it makes sense for it to be soul because that would explain how he's taken over Julius's body. If that, it's even him taking over. Maybe he created Julius as a separate soul to disguise himself while Julius went about gaining power and doing everything he did, and then he could take over whenever he could. Maybe that's how it is. But it's, you know, it's it's nice to have a confirmation that Julius and Lucius are two separate people. But when you see him transform, it's clearly obvious that, you know, Lucius looks exactly like Julius when he's older. So, that must be, it's just a case of the hair colour being different, I think. But, uh, yeah, what a reveal. What a reveal. And I can't wait to see where the story goes next. The final act, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure, pretty certain... But it's going to be at least 150 to 200 chapters long. I imagine this story will end around 500 chapters. Uh, and hopefully, you know, big, big, hopefully this this won't be dragged out like you see in a lot of uh, other mangas. Where, you know, they have like a final war arc or something. I feel like we just had a war arc, you know, with the Spade Kingdom arc. So hopefully this will be a lot more chill, perhaps. Uh, there's still so many things we need to see in the story. Like I said, we need to... we need. We, Hopefully we get an arc, you know, based on Yami's uh, country, the, the Rising Sun. Hopefully we get some backstory on Charmy and the dwarves. Uh, the, uh, you know, people are saying that we've already had three of the spirits revealed, I think. Uh, which I think is true, isn't it? We had the wind spirit that Yuno has, the fire spirit that's with uh, Galeon. And then we had the water spirit, which is with uh, Lula uh, Pichka, I think. So we still need the earth spirit. And, you know, dwarfs are part of the earth, aren't they? So that would be a nice fit in there, wouldn't it? So we got that storyline left to do. Um, what else is left? Well, I feel, I, feel, I feel like those are really the main sort of points that we have to go through. And then obviously the underworld arc, I feel like that we need to get, which will obviously lead, I'm assuming, is going to be one of the final arcs of the story. Uh, because... Um, Surely there's going to be more devils, right? Uh, and I feel I feel like um, with the revelation that you know that the main villain, the main big bad, has been Lucius Zol Greatest this whole time. Uh, it makes me wonder if his siblings will somehow be revived and come back as well. And obviously with Lucifero's heart in uh, in Alderman's possession, or in this case, uh, 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 you know Lucius' possession right now, or uh, and most likely uh, Astaroth. Uh, <laughs> Um, does that mean that Lucifero has a chance to come back? Don't know, but it'll be interesting to see what's going on. Maybe it's going to be used as a power-up, or maybe he just likes collecting devil hearts. Who knows? But uh, this is clearly a devil who wanted to be in the highest position possible. And it makes me wonder now whether, you know, Lucifer, you know, uh, you know, Lucifero did all of this in the first place so he could revive himself and maybe get his revenge on Astaroth, maybe? I don't know. It seemed like a lot of the devils were sort of 
not really working together, if that makes sense. And it, it Beazle Bob, uh, Lucifer, or Mega Kula, like, I don't know, it's weird, because Mega Kula seemed to be sort of somewhat afraid of uh, Lucifer when he, when he manifested, manifested. So, what was going on there, right? Uh, but yeah, interesting to see, interesting to see what's going to happen with that. But uh, overall, I, I loved this chapter. It was a great bloody reveal chapter. And it, it just makes, you know, it makes me want to sit down and reread this entire arc from the beginning now. But more importantly, it makes me want to see this in anime form. So bloody hell, fingers crossed, guys, that the anime comes back. Fingers crossed that next year, when we get the movie, that the movie leads to the anime coming back. Because if this is the final arc, you know... Though, I, to be fair, I, if it does come back, I don't feel like there's going to be enough material to adapt yet. I mean, how many chapters are there for it to adapt? I'm assuming there's like, what, 50 chapters? Maybe, 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 maybe more, maybe 60 for it to adapt at that point. Uh, which I don't think is going to be enough, like, because the anime, it, it, it adapts like three to four chapters in an episode. It would go through it very quickly. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's a case of where will we be by the time we get to 20 you know, towards the end of 2023 and then maybe 2024. Maybe the anime will come back when the manga is about to end. That will be our hope, really. But yeah, still, very good buddy chapter. And I cannot wait for... I'm assuming that, obviously, we have to wait three months. I have to remember this. We have to wait three more months until we get the next chapter, which is crazy. Like, to think that I started this and now it's like, oh, we're in the final arc now. Holy crap, that was unexpected. Uh... Or in this case, act. And now we have to wait three months for it to kickstart off again. Okay. Cool. Cool. Take take that break because he deserves it. He deserves it after all the hating he's got. You know, screw it to those people who, who are just like bad-mouthing him, bad-mouthing his story, hating him and, and giving him the benefit of the doubt. Like, have faith for Christ's sake. Like, have faith. Uh, but yeah. Can't wait. Hope you guys like this review. As always, remember to like and subscribe. Sorry for the constant leaving and going, but... Jesus Christ, if you were in my uh, uh, condition right now, you, you'd probably be dying right now. So, you know, in pain and that. But, uh, yeah, uh, probably going to go and sleep off now. Because uh, I definitely need it. Take care, guys. And what an awesome chapter, right? <laughs> Bye, guys.